uh, welcome. Uh, we'll have our uh, Sunday school again today. Uh, we are again, once again, meeting in the pavilion. We've got several people here. Uh, some people out of town today. Um, I trust that you there where you are are being safe and that the Lord's blessing you and keeping you safe during this time. Uh, we would normally ask for prayer requests. We've kind of done that here uh, ahead of time. We talked a little bit, of course, about the virus and how it's impacting people. I ask y'all if you would. Remember Brother Jim Bruce. I had a chance to talk to him this week. And he's working up in Memphis, Tennessee, uh, in a county in Tennessee called Shelby County. And they've had a lot of uh, a virus outbreak there. Brother Jim's had a lot of people that he worked with are testing positive. Uh, he was tested this past week and did test negative. So we praise the Lord for that. But y'all just remember, uh, Brother Jim, if you would, we had a couple of mentioned the Orr family and uh, Brother uh, Tripp and Miss Donna's uh, grandson's caregiver also uh, had tested positive. But it looks like the, the baby for right now is okay. So y'all just remember that if you do. So uh, I'm going to pray now. I'm going to open us up in a word of prayer. And you be sure to pray where you are. God don't want you necessarily to listen to me pray. God wants you to pray. So, uh, dear Lord, we thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for another opportunity, Lord, on this beautiful morning uh, to spend time in this pavilion here at our church, at Way of the Cross Baptist Church, Lord. Just talking about your word, Lord, and trying to get a message from you today for our Sunday school. Lord, we ask you to be with these prayer requests, things that we've mentioned, Lord, and all the uh, many, many things, Lord, that we did not mention. Lord, ask you to have your will and your way in each and every situation. Lord, ask you to continue to work uh, through all the circumstances surrounding this virus. Lord, how it impacts our church that we might get back to whatever you would have us to have as normal, Lord, going forward. We give you all the praise and honor and glory for everything you do. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Today our class is studying in the fifth lesson in the second half of our Sunday school material. It's the next to the last lesson in our current material. The title of that section is Dealing with Messy Relationships. Dealing with Messy Relationships. We looked at six traits that make for healthy relationships. We've looked at love, forgiveness, encouragement, service. Uh, our lesson for this week is about yielding. Just that word yield, yield, or humility. Uh, it's in page 142 of your student book. If you're interested in looking around there, we talked last week about serving, serving other people. Uh, most of all have some selfishness in us somewhere, uh, some more than others maybe. The lesson last week talked about doing things for other people, being a servant to other people. Our lesson this week is along those same lines, so I would have to assume that God would want us to really pay attention that he gave us two lessons uh, closely related right together. In the world that we live in today, nobody is really interested in yielding or even sometimes hearing or learning about humility. Most of what we hear about today is almost the exact opposite of being humble. Unless you've been living under a rock the last few months or so, then you know that a lot of people today they're all about them and all about their opinions and what they think and how they feel. Uh, and I don't want to in any way ignore or brush off the fact that there is social injustice uh, in our society. Uh, there's social injustice in our country. There's social injustice all over the whole world. There always has been, and there certainly is still prevalent today in a lot of times and a lot of situations. But a lot of times people are just plain selfish. They want all the attention to be on them and how they feel and what they think. And that is certainly not the same as being humble. The main point of the lesson today is that we should humbly place the needs of others before our own. I'll repeat that. Humbly place the needs of others before our own. Now, being humble is a character trait that many people would associate with weakness. Now, you might even hear somebody referred to a humble person as somebody that just lets people walk all over or somebody that's just being a doormat for somebody else but humility is a very desirable trait for a person to have Jesus Christ was very humble Jesus Christ patterned the idea of humility here's the one and only son of God left heaven came to this earth in the form of a man, just like you and I. The question I thought about, a couple of questions I thought about as I was studying, man, would I have done that? Or could I have done that? Their answer is, kind of knowing Brother Andy a little bit, no, I wouldn't have done that. I wouldn't have done that for somebody else. I'd have stayed right there in heaven, did what I'd been doing. 
So let's read some scripture, though, in Philippians. Turn in your Bible or in your student book. We'll read some scripture in the book of Philippians. We'll be in chapter 2. We'll read verses 1 through 15. The, all those verses were not included in the student material, but we'll try to make our way through all 15 verses today in Philippians chapter 2. So if you want to read all of it, you'll need your Bible or a Bible device of some kind. Starting in Philippians chapter 2, beginning in verse 1, the Bible says, If there be for any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, that each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. Be in verse 8 now. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Verse 12, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Do all things without murmurings and disputing, that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. What do those verses say to you right off? Anybody? Just as you hear that scripture in, scripture in Philippians chapter 2. You need to be a lot like Christ. I'm sorry? You need to be a lot like Christ and act like Christ. Be a, need to be a lot like Christ and act like Christ. That's the theme uh, for us going through these materials about relationships. Is The goal is always for us to be more Christ-like. That's good. Thank you, Brother Ron. Well, Anybody? Let your light so shine before me in the material Amen. Amen. As we live more like Christ, our life becomes an example to people that may not do not know Christ. That's good. Verse 14 was very convicted and they do all things without murmurs and murmurings and disputes. Amen. Amen. Yeah. That's right. Verse 14 <laughs> says, Do all things so without murmurings and disputing. That's right. My old flesh sometimes likes to jump on them. Sure. That's good. The setting for today uh, is commonly believed. It appears that the Apostle Paul uh, wrote this letter to the Philippian church while he was under house arrest in Rome. Paul did a lot of writing while he was under some kind of arrest or even in prison at times. Uh, much of what God allowed him to pen in the New Testament was written while he was incarcerated. Uh, Paul and his companions had established the church at Philippi uh, during his second missionary journey. It would have been the first church, uh, as far as we know, on the European continent. Uh, the Philippian church had sent Epaphroditus with some supplies to Paul, maybe some monetary help, and Paul was thanking them for those supplies. Uh, Epaphroditus, as had Paul, had been really, really sick to the point of death, Paul said. So Paul had sent him back home with this message uh, to try to better recover uh, there in Philippi. Y'all all right? Point number one for the lesson today, we're all in this together. We are all in this together. Uh, we'll just go verse by verse through Philippians chapter 2, uh, starting in verse 1. The Bible says, If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies. We see here in verse 1 that little word, if, I, if. We see it used four different times. Paul was explaining to these Christians in Philippi and Christians today as well, right? This book would have been just as much for us as it would have been those people there in the Philippian church. 
uh, that there were some basic unifying principles that all of us share as Christians, or all of us should share as Christians. Maybe we don't all the time. Paul was basically saying, look, you say you're a Christian, you say you believe this, you say you believe that. Well then, if, that word, if you do, really do, then, and Paul was giving them instructions based on those comments. Paul was trying to remind the Christians that might be disagreeing about some things that they had a lot in common if they were truly saved. And we'll list those, those if things. The consolation in Christ. The Greek word that's translated here, consolation, means to call alongside, to work, and to serve together. Uh, those of us that are saved have been called to serve the Lord. You might not have been called to, serve, to preach or to teach or those things that we are called to be a missionary like Brother Allen and the Bradleys, but you have been called, if you're saved, to be a witness to other people. The second thing was the comfort of love. Another reality that would help the people be more unified was a common, shared love for Jesus Christ. Paul was really saying, if you really do love Jesus, then the, one of the primary things Jesus said is that you should love each other. You should love each other. The third thing was the fellowship of the Spirit. Paul reminded these Christians in the church at Philippi and us also that he was invested in the church there as well and that regardless of where they were as individuals or what their uh, individual opinions were, that they all should be working toward the same goal. The last thing was the bowels and mercies. This phrase was meant to convey a sense of compassion and to encourage them to be tender-hearted towards other people and to be tender-hearted especially towards other Christians. Verse number two says, Fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. In verse 2 here, Paul used that word translated if to just subtly point out, look, if you're really Christians like you say you are, then act like you are. Just be like Christians. And if you do, then it would bring him much joy as the person who still helped to establish the church still felt a strong sense of responsibility for the church if all those Christians would just get on the same page right? There's no excuse for them or for us today as Christians to be competing against each other, struggling against each other, making it harder for each other just because we have some silly disagreement about some things. Verse 3 and verse 4 of the Bible says, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Paul goes on here in verse 3 and 4 to tell them if they are to be successful in serving Christ together, that they have to do what God's asking them to do out of a true, heartfelt desire to be like Christ. Uh, they're not to serve out of some desire to be recognized. They're not to serve out of some desire to get praise or credit for themselves. They're not to be in some kind of competition with another Christian or another congregation to see who can do the most be compared to other Christians. They are to be humble and to do all that they do solely for the glory of God. It's not really about what I do as an individual that's important. It is what we all do collectively to further the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's not really about each of us as an individual Christian or even one church congregation or maybe even another denomination. It's about what we as true believers can do to help further the cause of Christ. So we're all in this together. That's point one today. Anybody have anything? Y'all all right? People nodding their heads, so we'll keep going along. Point number two. This has been a common theme through almost every lesson. We mentioned a little bit as we were leading in. Point number two. Jesus once again as the model. Jesus once again as the model or as the target. I had target listed there first. Now, Philippians chapter two. Picking back up in verse 5, the Bible says, Let this mind be in you, which also was in Christ Jesus. If you de decide to pattern your life, your Christian life after somebody, the only real option is to pattern it after the person whose name is part of that word Christian, right? The first uh, six letters make up the word Christ, Christians. If we refer to yourself as Christians, it only makes sense that you would try to let your mind be the same as the mind of Christ. 
we'll ver read verse 6, 7, and 8 together now. Uh, Philippians chapter 2. Uh, who being, talking about Jesus Christ, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. We know he is equal with God. But made himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. We've all heard somebody say this. You better remember where you came from, right? Heard people talk about that. Sometimes, I guess, in a good connotation, sometimes in a bad. Well, we need to remember where Jesus came from. He was in heaven. Jesus voluntarily left to come to this earth, take on all the same issues that we struggle with, that we had to take on, things that were prevalent during that time. He humbled himself to the point that he allowed misguided people some of them probably Christians to crucify him. But they didn't kill Jesus. They didn't take his life. He had the power to control every single circumstance surrounding what happened that day on the cross. But Jesus chose to die on that cross so you and I could live. Our only access to God the Father and to heaven is through Jesus Christ. Verse number 9, we'll read verse 9, 10, and 11. The Bible says, Wherefore God hath also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. God the Father obviously knew what, he was, what was going on, he knew what was required, and he not only approved of it, he set the wheels in motion to bring all that to place. He knew that in the end, Jesus, his only son, would humble himself and pay the ultimate price for all of our sins. But he also knows at some point that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. If you watch the news today, there's a lot of talk about bowing for this and bowing for that and all the things people might do and are going to do and are not going to do and all those things make no mistake it is a fact that one day every single person saved or lost will acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord Amen. think about that as I read that scripture I was thinking about that and had that thought for those of us that are saved whether we go back in the rapture or whether we uh, meet the Lord in death before the rapture happens Acknowledging him as Lord ain't going to be hard. That ain't hard for me. It wouldn't be hard for you. Think about a person that lives their life here on this earth, rejects ever how many invitations there are, rejects ever how many times God convicts them, tries to point them to a Savior. They get to heaven lost without Jesus Christ. They're going to have to kneel, bow, and acknowledge Jesus Christ as Lord. And even as they do, they'll still be rejected. What the Bible say? It says, depart from me, for I never knew you. Jesus don't know you here on this earth, and you don't know Jesus as your Savior. Jesus is not going to know you in heaven. Verse number 12. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with trier, with fear and trembling. Paul then in verse 12 just encourages these believers to do what he has seen them do in person and what he has known them to do in the past in his absence. He knew that they could be what they were supposed to be if they would just keep their eyes focused on Jesus and mostly not allow themselves to be focused on other people. Y'all all right? Yes. Point number three, there's only one way. Point number three, there's only one way. We'll pick back up in Philippians chapter 2, verse 13. The Bible says, For it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Uh, Brother Allen and I, Brother Tripp and I, uh, decide we're going to try and do something for the Lord individually or together as a group. The only way we can be successful it's for God to be leading that charge. The only way we can be successful is for us all to yield 
and be submissive to what the Lord's will is for whatever activity that us that is for all of us to be all that we can be in the Lord the focus has to be on what the Lord wants and how the Lord leads right we got to leave ourselves out of it and focus on what God would have us to do the Bible in verse 14 and 15 says do all things without murmurings and disputings that ye may be blameless and harmless the sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom ye shine as lights in the world that verse 14 I think it was Patty mentioned that that it caused some conviction for her it sure does for me there's a whole lot of things that I do in my life that I spend a whole lot of time murmuring and disputing as I'm doing it right uh, hey it's late on Thursday night the trash man comes on Friday morning Oh, this trash has got to be gathered up and put in the trash can and rolled down to the street, right? Well, I might do it, but, man, I sure ain't happy dragging that can down that long driveway, right? That seems like a small thing. But, man, I'm murmuring and disputing the whole way down there, right? you got to clean the house. you got to do all these other different things and responsibilities. Well, getting them done is one thing. Doing them without murmuring and without disputing and with the right heart and the right attitude, uh, that's a different thing. Listen, we should be so happy that God has chosen to save us and give us the opportunity to try and share that gift with others. We should never, ever, ever complain or murmur or dispute about the opportunities that the Lord has provided us after all the things that he's done for us. From time to time, uh, somebody's not paying attention to my life will say to me, well, man, we could do this or we could do that on a Sunday or we can get up early Sunday morning and do this. Or we can go on Saturday night and spend the night and do that. And I have been guilty before saying, man, i got to go to church. Well, I don't mean that in a negative or a murmuring way, right? But I need to pay more attention because if I'm talking to somebody that doesn't understand church, they might say, well, man, you've got to go. Because I clearly don't have to go, right? That's not why I come. I don't really mean it if I say it that way. What I really mean is, man, I get to go. Or I, sh I go, right? I have to be careful that I don't mislead other people into thinking it's some, some chore that I have to do or some uh, schedule that I have to keep. Uh, going to church and being a body of a part of the body of Christ is not a burden for me. It's a privilege. But this service in, that we're called into will almost always result in us swimming upstream. Now, those of you that have close family living around you, There'll be times when that family don't recognize that. Well, you got to do this, or you give that, or you do something else, or even your friends. But especially as you get out into the public, the vast majority of people in the rest of this world that are not for the Lord, that are either ignoring the Lord, or worse yet, opposed to the things of God, that group of people is growing. They're reproducing way faster than those of us that are Christians. There's way more people uh, growing up and living in a population that don't care about the things of God right. is, than there is the people that do. Yeah. Right? Sure. The majority of people in this world are running away from God just as hard and just as fast as they can in some other direction. Brother Stephen preached a fabulous message Wednesday night. And, uh, Peter, uh, as I listened to him preach, clearly words straight from God's book. I couldn't help but think of how the words that I heard run contrary to everything the world's trying to teach us today or trying to force on us today. I would encourage you, if you didn't get to hear that sermon on Wednesday, July the 1st, that you go back and watch it on YouTube. I talked to Brother Stephen afterwards, and I said, well, you messed up your chance to be a big hotshot pastor at some liberal, high-paying megachurch one day. I said, because the minute you turn in your resume and they see Stephen Bell, and they go out to the Internet and do a Google search, and that sermon from Wednesday night pops up, you won't get to be the pastor of that liberal-leaning church. Because what you preached, what I have known him to preach his whole life, what he teaches, which I have known him to teach his whole life, is exactly what God's word says. 
and that's not what most people want to do. So I encourage you, you get a chance to go back and listen to it, you should. It was outstanding. Wednesday, July the 1st, it'll be on YouTube forever and ever. It'll never go away. I encourage you to go out and take a chance to listen to it. So uh, we as individuals uh, try to be more humble in our daily walk. I, for one, need a lot of help in that area. Uh, the key is how will I personally place the needs of other people before my own? How will I yield to the Holy Spirit and what God wants for my life rather than just concentrate on what Brother Andy wants all the time? There's three steps. The first one is, is titled Small Steps. The lesson material gave some ideas about how we can incrementally change our way of thinking instead of always trying to be best, always trying to be first, we can purposely put other people ahead of us by making small changes just in our everyday lives, maybe insignificant things it would seem to us as a way to start. The second thing is medium steps. We can be honest about the mistakes that we've made in the past in this area, share those shortcomings with other people. Now, none of us are perfect except the one that saved us all, Jesus Christ. We never know when our honesty about our shortcomings might help somebody else uh, that's struggling in this area. The third thing is large steps. If there's somebody that we have taken advantage of or that we have blatantly mistreated in the past, we can go to that person and try to make it right. And going forward, we can try to do the things that we do and purposely do them anonymously so that we don't end up trying to take credit for those things ourselves. Y'all all right? So as a church, uh, we had considered a lot of options for our services together, uh, but in the abundance of caution, we have decided to pretty much stay the same uh, with the exception of the crosswalk activity on Wednesday night and our children's church activity on Sunday morning. Uh, they'll both be active going forward. They started this past Wednesday night. Um, our Sunday school class, our class, will continue to meet uh, here in the sanctuary uh, every morning on Sunday as the Lord allows at 9 a.m. The other classes will still be on video. We'll try to get ours posted as well. Our sixth and last lesson in our current material entitled Dealing with Messy Relationships will be on another trait required for healthy relationships. And that trait next lesson will be acceptance or to accept the idea that we can accept things. Our scripture will be in Romans chapter 14 and the lesson had kind of split up into two parts. I can tell you if you want to read all the scripture ahead of time, you better read all first 19 verses. Romans chapter 14, I've already decided I'm not cool with the split they did, so we're going to try to go through all 19 of those verses. The main point is that we cannot let differences of opinion damage our relationships. There may be times that we have to just agree to disagree, but we can't let differences of opinion damage our relationships, and that'll be in the uh, lesson on its acceptance. So God bless you all. Uh, I'm going to get Brother Tripp Evans to dismiss us if he would as we leave, but be sure and let Patty or I know if there's anything we can do with you or for you uh, during this time when we're still kind of restricted as a church brother tree. Bless the Heavenly Father, dear Lord, we thank you for this time.